Here we have what we did in part one of tips and techniques using the Holbein watercolours. So here is our tonal value scale just using Prussian blue and some burnt sienna and I've made up 54321. Here we did the graded wash just using a, quite a lot of water with strong pigment and then we just overlapped right the way down until we got to transparent paint which was almost water and it's faded out beautifully. Here we did the um, blending of colours and using the same technique as a graded wash we dropped green, uh, yeah, sorry, we dropped aureolin into the Prussian blue and we created the blue, the green and the yellow and again faded that out. Here we did quinacridone red and we dropped in some aureolin yellow and here we did the same again. This one as you can see was too wet here and then this became dry so when I put more water in it forms that hard edge. This one didn't have it because the amount of water in the red and the yellow was the same so it merged on the paper. When it starts to dry out like that you'll get these little edges which you might like. They might be useful or they might be your worst enemy depending what you're painting. So what I'd like to do today is to talk about uh, transparent and opaque paints and both have a place in your palette. So I've got here I've got my Holbein um, watercolours. I've only got two opaque colours here. One is uh, Cad Yellow Orange which is opaque and I've got Titanium White. I've got neutral tint which is um, actually also opaque so that's three. So those threes are the only opaque colours I've got. The yellow ochre is semi-transparent and all the others are transparent. So why is it interesting and helpful having opaque colours? Well opaque will go over other colours really really well. So I've got really thick juicy paint here. So if I take a line and go over my Prussian blue, you can see that it will show up and you'll get yellow visible over that very strong blue. If I go over the green, which is aureole and yellow and Prussian blue, it will still show up and you'll get that lovely look on top. It will also go over quinacridone red. That's a very dark colour but it will still, you will still get it to go over the top and also it will go over the pink that's mixed with weak quinacridone red. So those three areas there, it shows you how helpful opaque colours can be. So if we do the same with neutral tint, which is opaque, you'll see that you will get very, very opaque colours. That's very strong and you can't see anything of the pigment underneath. Now if I mix um, my titanium white with my also opaque neutral tint, you will get a grey that's opaque because both of those pigments are opaque they're very solid and the light is not visible from your paint pigment underneath. Your eye sees watercolour by the light going through the pigment, hitting the paper and then bouncing back into your eye. It won't do that with opaque colours. All it does is hit the paint and bounce back to your eye because it, it can't go through the paper to the paper uh, and the pigment. Um, are those colours useful? Yes, if you've got, for instance, um, some yellow, maybe you want to do some petals, and you want to have warm and cool colours in those petals, you can always put some cad yellow orange there. You can also mix transparent colours with opaque uh, if you say wanted to warm that up and there you'd have you know some 
maybe flower colours where you've got opaque over transparent. You cannot put transparent over opaque. The colours won't show up at all. So it's very interesting to know what's opaque and what's not. Always read your colour chart and Holbein colour chart have all of those um, opacity and transparency ratings printed on the chart. Very, very helpful. Um, the other places where the titanium white is helpful, it's not very clean, Jude. It's got a bit of blue, I think, with that. I'll just clean that off my palette. So, again, I'll get some white. Now, if I mix that with Prussian blue, which is an extremely staining, brilliant, brilliant blue, that transparent Prussian blue will become opaque because I've mixed it with the white. So, for example, it will go over a little bit more water to make sure it's going to flow across the surface of the paper. So there you can see that that blue will now go over those colours. You might have painted, say, a bright field of yellow flowers and want to put uh, some green over the top of that. So you could mix that into a green and it would go over the top of um, more yellow. It would go over the top of any transparent colour because with the white added it has become opaque so that's really handy. Um, so that white mixed with the Prussian blue becomes effectively like cerulean which is a lovely colour for your sky. You can also use it of course to get um, you could make a, an opaque pink mix some white, opaque titanium white with quinacridone red and take that straight across and this is really effective too for doing washes anywhere where you think maybe you've got a yellow that's a little bit bright I'll show you how to dull that down with a blue wash. So this is a mixture of ultramarine and cobalt 290 in Holbein. It's very strong, I'll just make that a little less strong. So there I've got no pigment showing hardly, but I'll go over the number two there. So that will just go darker. But if I take, for instance, that blue and go over uh, yellow, you'll get a beautiful green showing. So across all those yellows, you can see how you'll get a green. So you could put a wash of blue over any yellow if you wanted to sort of turn that yellow into a more green yellow rather than a warm yellow. Um, the same thing, you can get some quinacridone red if you wanted to warm up some yellow and just take a wash of quinacridone red over that yellow and you'll see that you'll end up with a lovely, the underneath wash because it's dry will glow through. So very, very useful um, to have happen. Um, you can put, of course, a pink wash over your blue if it's completely dry and you'll get mauve. So it's really interesting to know how to do this and where to use it for your um, washes, for warming colours up and also to neutralise colours. Um, if ever you want to neutralise a yellow if it's too bright, just put a little bit of violet and purple because the opposite of yellow is purple and it will always grey it off. So you'll get this grey colour happening if your yellow is too bright. Um, the same as if you've got a red. Um, you might be mixing up a red and you think, oh, that's too bright. Put some green over that. Green's the opposite of red and it will grey it off. 
really well. So you might have an opportunity where you think, oh, it's too bright, maybe in the shadow of a petal or something, and that is a way to put a wash over it where it will absolutely do the trick and um, you'll be very happy with the results. Um, last week we also talked about, in part one, uh, negative painting where we did the circle and if you want to do a circle you can, um, I won't do that bit actually, I've done a drawing here, I'll show you something different, it's a bit more interesting than drawing a circle with a shadow around it. So here I've done a drawing and this is going back to our tonal values which are so, so important. It's more important than your colour. So what I'm going to do is mix up, I'll just use what I've got here, mix up a dark colour so that I can actually put some more red with that. Just, I just want a very dark tone and you can use just one tone to do a painting. You don't need lots of tone but one tone can often say so much. So with this man um, I'm going to do the, the light is going to be coming from the left hand side. So the light is going to be coming from here. So the back of him will be quite dark because um, there's not as much light, obviously. So we'll just do his hair. Um, give him an ear. And then we'll come down, maybe a bit of a shadow under the chin. Um, and a bit of a collar. Um, and then we're going to give him the, cl the clothing there will be darker than where the light's hitting, be a little, little bit of a crease there and also down here he'll have a bit of a crease. Um, the cuff of his jacket will be dark as will the underside of his sleeve. So just using a just damp brush we can get that a little bit more water just with the very tip of the brush just drag that pigment up a little bit um, we'll give him his eyes maybe he's wearing glasses Okay, and the underside of his hand and his cane will also be in shadow. Um, now I have gone over this, That's, I will be able to lift that off and give the effect of light on that side. And if ever you want to do some lifting out, you might want a soft edge there. These little brushes, that's just an acrylic brush. Um, you can buy them, it's just a quarter inch chisel brush, but terrific for um, scrubbing out that very hard edge. If you want that, you can get it to go, even though that's Prussian blue and some burnt sienna, Holbein will lift off beautifully. One of the reasons I just love their paints. Um, you might decide that's a little bit dark there, so let's just soften that a little bit and we'll get the effect of the arm going around and the light going around the arm. Okay, now sometimes all you need to do to finish that is some negative painting. So negative painting is where you don't actually paint the subject, you paint around it.
and negative painting is also another really good skill to learn and you can use that in so many things that you paint all the time. So there you've got um, a very, very simple figure. Um, we've got light. I should have left more light on the front of his coat. But I should be able to lift a little bit off there. And to complete it, I'll just lift a little bit off the front of his jacket. And you can see that that's a very, very easy way to paint a figure. Uh, using tone. So if I'd use lots of colour it might not look as effective as just using the one colour and a little bit of water. So we could complete that with just a couple of splatters of water here. Maybe if you like big splatters. There we go it's completed. Now there's something else that I would like to share with you. So this is um, some different techniques we did using salt. So you can see here, what I've done is I've put a big brush load of water. This technique is great for doing the backgrounds where you just want a little bit of something. These are quite bright. You don't have to do them as bright if you don't want to. But it's really helpful to know how to do it. So put the water down, make sure it's shiny wet, and then just get normal table salt. Um, and then if you wanted to soften the edges, some of these I've softened already, like I softened out this edge, I can soften out this edge over here. And you can use quite stiff brushes and it's always good to blot that off with some paper towel. And you can do the same thing this here, the edges have all been removed. Um, I really, I think this is my favourite. I love how those colours there mix. And you have to leave it to dry. You never know what, exactly what the result is going to be. Um, and if you wanted just a hint of something in the background, but not very much, you could just leave that very, very pale wash. Don't put much pigment in at all. And it's always good to experiment with your pigment and the water before you plunge in and put a background in a beautiful painting and possibly ruin it. So have a go and experiment. So here you can just put water on that edge and just let it sit for a moment and I'll put some over here. Leave it to sit for a moment and get a quite a stiff little scrubbing brush and you can just gently scrub that edge Sometimes, you, if the water hasn't penetrated enough, you have to scrub it quite hard and you'll get that to lift off. I'll just leave that to sit a moment and come over here and do the same for this edge. Because I love the look of lost and found edges so that you've got some edges that are very hard and some that are very soft. I think it adds kind of an air of mystery to your work and it might be just exactly the tip that you need to finish off a painting. Now that hasn't lifted off as much as I hope but I would have, um, if you want to lift that off more, just keep repeating and repeating. Uh, clean water not like mine, it's gone a bit dirty now, but if you just keep gently teasing away at that with a nice stiff brush, you'll be able to get lovely soft edges along there. Or you might just prefer that really hard edge which is formed by running the brush quickly down the rough paper 
So this paper here is rough. So um, I hope you've enjoyed Tips and Techniques Part 2 and I look forward to showing you more on Tips and Techniques Part 3. Thanks for joining me.